Okay, um, welcome back. This yes. is our second recording here. I'm Abe. And uh, I'm Alessandro. And we are taking a look into Open R&DR, Collection, mm -hmm. Scotland. And all, yeah. And uh, last time we were dealing we were dealing with collections of, in particular, circles and try to see how we can iterate them. And we asked ourselves, is there a nice way that Kotlin offers us to transform a collection into something else? So we could make like a second collection, collection mm -hmm. two, and the method we're going to use is called map. Mm -hmm. So we can take the first collection and map it into something new. Mm -hmm. And now here we're going to create something based on each circle. Mm -hmm. um, so I was suggesting putting a rectangle at the center of each circle. Mm -hmm. Let's see how we can do this. There's a rectangle thing from center. Mm. And then we can use the center of the circle. Mm -hmm. And now we need to specify a width and a height. Mm -hmm. I don't know, something small. Mm -mm. Okay, so now, and you can see here in this hint, uh, this is a collection or a list of rectangles. Mm -hmm. This is a list of circles. Mm -hmm. So now we could render those. Um, we can use the same approach, mm -hmm. uh, collection two for each. We can go first easy, like we can just draw rectangles mm -hmm. just to see them quickly. Re rectangles and collection two. That is one of these overloaded, uh, you know, convenience yeah. um, methods that we have in Open Render, mm -hmm. very useful. And now we can see, well, it's maybe not very obvious, but there's mm -hmm. a little white uh, rectangle. We can change their color mm -hmm. with the fill method again. Mm -hmm. um, but now we, we will change the color of all yes. the rectangle, rectangles at the same type. Yeah, I just wanted to make it at least mm -hmm. visible down here. Visible, yeah. yeah. Super. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So um, now we have these uh, two separate uh, collections, and we, uh, of course, we could do the same thing that we did with circles. Uh, I iterate over the collection with a for each and use drawer dot rectangle. Uh, that's I think that's clear by now. Another thing that I'm uh, wondering, and probably the people you know looking at uh, the video, they might have observed that every time we use map. There is a particular way of transforming, literally, it maps a collection into something else, okay? But both into the definition of the collection call and call to, it seems that there is always a line of code in mm -hmm. the uh, two curly brackets, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what happens if I have multiple line of codes and uh, mm. uh, how the multiple... The right. duplicity of this line relates to what's going to end, end up in the collection. Right. So the last line is what gets uh, mm -hmm. inserted into the list. Right. But for example, imagine we want squares. We mm -hmm. want the same width and height, but we want them to be random. Mm -hmm. So we could declare here uh, like a side uh, the dimension. Mm -hmm. and this is going to be a random double, mm -hmm. for example, between 5 and 15. Yes. And we use this here. Yes. So you can see that you can write more lines of code. Yeah. And now I it just will reduce. It. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, uh, something I mean, like something that uh, one could think of is to use this uh, uh, randomness directly inside the declaration of the rectangle, but this will give us different something different, right? Uh, Do you mean at the time of drawing? No, no, at the inside, like intuitively, side mm -hmm. is appears in both right. of the... What happens if we substitute and why is this different somehow? Right. There is a nice... <laughs> now I'm talking about IntelliJ. There is mm -hmm. a inline, uh, if I find it, inline property, mm -hmm. Alt-Shift-I. Mm -hmm. So what this does, it, it removes the variable and it inserts yes. that everywhere. But now this should give us different results, right? Very different. Yes. So what's going on here? Because now the width and the height not, are not necessarily equal. Exactly. So the extra tech, basically, I mean, if we want to conceptualize a bit, the extra line of code was put in a constraint, mm -hmm. like the, the idea that we want height yeah. and width 
to be the same. Exactly. So this this very intuitive uh, geometric and if you want also uh, artistic uh, outcome is related to the code in the presence of this uh, extra constraint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what about uh, how about uh, uh, transforming um, trans because you know now we use the map. Mm -hmm. Right, and we used map and we used the property of the circle to build some uh, new uh, geometric object, a rectangle. Right. How about we want to preserve the order in which this circle had been created in the first place? Like if you we did for each index, mm -hmm. can we do something similar for uh, map? As uh, a map index. Map index, yeah, it, that would be useful if we wanted to know the index of the item we are mm -hmm. creating. Mm -hmm. So this is very useful, useful also for syncing type of, uh, um, I would say, operations when mm -hmm. we want to sync uh, different type of uh, objects in lists. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I, what I will do, just an example, mm -hmm. is maybe the, the maximum width and height mm -hmm. depends on the index. So yeah. we should have bigger items at the bottom. Yes. And well, this is not very big because up to 25, yeah. we could multiply it by some number mm -hmm. if we want a bit more yeah. range. So we can see smaller shapes at the top. And yeah, and uh, I really like I really like uh, somehow map uh, that the the, um, the method map for collections because for me it gives me a, the idea of transformation mm. so that you have something that gets transformed into something else yeah and uh, a lot of the time in things i've been done this uh, transforming is you know seeing things from different point uh, point of view mm -hmm. somehow mm -hmm. and um, another thing that of collections that we have not talked about yet is that that we can specify the type of a priori of what's gonna be into the collection mm -hmm. right right so kotlin allows us to to say to be safe and say i want a list say, of circles. True. Um, and um, most of the time it, it, it infers it from the what's inside the list, but sometimes you want to be clear about what is there. Yeah, yeah. we can declare a mm -hmm. list here. Uh, let's see, list. And you can specify here mm -hmm. what types you want inside, for example, double. Mm -hmm. um, for example, what is it? Ah, yeah, four. Yeah, four elements. And they are all going to be 1.0. Mm -hmm. So in this case, we are making a collection of four numbers that are all 1.0. You mm -hmm. can see that here it's suggesting that it's not necessarily mm -hmm. it's not, not necessary to type this because it it knows it can see mm -hmm. from it here. It infers it yeah. from the yeah. But in other cases, it yeah, it can be useful sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the larger projects. Okay, so then now I would like to. Uh, do something. We have uh, uh, now collections uh, of static objects, static mm -hmm. graphical objects somehow. Mm -hmm. How we make them animate? Animate? Okay. Like move in some ways or... Uh, Maybe we could <laughs> transform them, these circles, for example? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. At the time of drawing? Yes. Mm, I think so, yes. you can... <laughs> I haven't tried this, but mm -hmm. do we have here a circle object? And if I multiply by two, what happens? Oh, yeah, they are okay. X, Y, and scale are all transformed. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is not what I wanted. I wanted just to change the radius. Mm -hmm. How could I? I think I can make a copy of, mm -hmm. of a circle mm -hmm. and specify a new radius. Mm -hmm. So the need, uh, you can go on and then I'll... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Let's see if I... Now, <laughs> that's yes. very small mm -hmm. and a bit bigger. We could also animate. We want to mm -hmm. give a change in number here. Mm -hmm. So I will specify... So we need some sort of a time. Now time or, enters right. in the story. This right? is very nice that we have seconds. Mm -hmm. So this is the current time in seconds. Mm -hmm. And if we take the assign, use the sign function of the seconds and... Here, uh, just to remem remind, I hit Alt Enter when a function is not recognized and mm -hmm. then you have to import it. Sometimes you have a bunch of options and that can be a bit tricky. Mm -hmm. I uh, you always look either for one that mentions OpenRNDR or mm -hmm. one that mentions Kotlin. Mm -hmm. So I take this one. 
Uh, so we have a R that depends mm -hmm. on seconds. Mm -hmm. um, but now these will also get to negative values. And right. Probably that's what something we don't want, or do we? <laughs> yeah, and very small we numbers could try. between <laughs> minus one and one. It's going to be almost invisible, like mm -hmm. uh, like pixels. So mm -hmm. we can increase the range of this wave. Mm -hmm. So if we multiply it by thirty, then we go. We get numbers between minus thirty and to plus thirty. Mm -hmm. And if I shift it, for example, mm -hmm. by forty, we we'll get only positive. Only positive numbers. So now I could type here radius is r and we have them all in sync mm. how can we get them out of sync we can use the index to i mean the the wave as a function of the index yeah so to get them uh... think of one thing like mm -hmm. currently uh, with this r we get the same value for all of them mm -hmm. because it only depends on seconds mm -hmm. and they all pretty much mm -hmm. are getting the same value for seconds mm -hmm. but if i add here the index we create a dependency on the... <laughs> yes. That's interesting. That's much interesting. <laughs> Actually, I like this. <laughs> yeah. It's very it's very cool. It's a sine wave, but, you know, sort of bubbly and yeah. uh, very cool. <laughs> and um, and actually, uh, you... I, I, I will go as far as, as to say that you had to use copy. In this case, why? Uh, right. Uh, um, in many cases, and here we favor immutability mm -hmm. so you cannot change objects but you can create new objects mm -hmm. based on the original ones mm -hmm. and so uh, a new concept enters into the game that is that of immutability so maybe one of the viewer are they are asking themselves are lists immutable there are two types of lists okay there are uh, immutable lists like mm -hmm. Uh, this one mm -hmm. list, and we also have mutable lists. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then now we maybe stop here, and we res when we come back with uh, mutable lists. Right, that's okay. a great idea. That's a good idea. <laughs> See you then.